Hey everybody, Logan here. Today we're talking about, well, the Nintendo Switch and controllers. Why? Because it's 2024, millions of people have a Nintendo Switch. Hey, we might be getting another uh, variation or version or a new successor to the Switch soon. But as of right now, we just don't know. But with so many people out there having a Nintendo Switch, you know, controllers are a thing. A lot of people just use the standard Joy-Con, right? But there are a lot of people out there that either don't like these because of how prone they are to drift, or they're just uncomfortable for a lot of games, especially if you're sitting at home playing it docked on your TV. Now, we all know there's the classic Switch Pro controller, which comes in many variations from Splatoon, Here's Monster Hunter, Super Smash Bros., Legend of Zelda, so on. There's so many of these. Now, if you don't want to spend the money, there's always the option of the the Nikes, as my buddy Nick Duel would call it, on Amazon. But you get what you pay for. These things are a little janky. So, with that being said, I'm going to give you a plethora of different controllers. Uh, about seven different ones. Eh, we got one that has two variations, I'll show you that as well. And a couple of honorable mentions at the end of controllers that might just be your next go-to if you don't want to spend a ton of money, or if you just want something solid, that doesn't drift. I got a couple of those too. Well, with that being said, let's get into the video. Let me show you these controllers. Hopefully you'll find one that you like. All right, so here's the first one. This one is probably the newest out of the batch. This comes from Easy SMX and this is the one most people will be after in terms of price and functionality. Hall Effect Sticks. So with Hall Effect Sticks, they all use magnets. So instead of plastic pieces that rub against each other, it's magnets. So the chance of drift is very, very slim. There could be some damage or something that happens. You know, drift isn't a 0% chance with these. It can happen if they get damaged but the chance of it happening is so slim unless you do something to it. Now, this one ranges anywhere from $20 to $30 depending on when you're buying it on Amazon. So like I said, it's Easy SMX and it's the T39 Pro. So if you look at it, it looks like a standard Switch Pro controller, something, you know, that you'll see many different variations of these on Amazon, but go with the Easy SMX. It's got a clear shell and it's got a fantastic feel. Like I said, Hall Effect sticks. The triggers are great. It actually has some resistance there. So you can use these on more than just the Switch, but I say go with this, use it on the Switch. I think it is one of the better ones you can get, especially for the price. So this is my first Easy SMX. They do make other ones, so you can go check them out uh, on Amazon. If you wanna see my full video on this, I did cover this uh, not too long ago, but I think this is a very, very good one. Next, I'm going to show you one that you can probably walk into any Walmart or Target and pick up a variation of it, and that is the Power A Enhanced Wire Wireless Controller. I think you can see it right there, but the big thing about this one, officially licensed Nintendo Switch Pro controllers do not have rumble so that's one bad thing but if you get one of these they have some weight most of them have weight into it to compensate for not having the rumble motors because older models felt very very light and almost fake a lot of people say but these are very solid controllers depending on when you're getting them they're around the 50 dollar mark so they're a little more expensive, but they are officially licensed by Nintendo. Usually you'll get some kind of uh, Nintendo imagery. I have two Legend of Zelda ones uh, in, in this series. I decided to choose this one because it is the latest one I have picked up. I like the Power A controllers because of how comfortable they are in the hand. They do have the programmable flappy paddles or buttons, whatever you want to call it. They do run on AA batteries. So God forbid your battery dies or whatnot while you're in game, you can always replace it. That is the programmable button and it's it's pretty solid, feels nice in the hand. The only thing is the price is a little high for something that doesn't have uh, NFC, motion controls, or rumble. Yeah, that's a lot. 
but you're paying for the build quality. The build quality is solid. People fight me on that. I've never had a problem with one. And usually uh, the imagery is always official Nintendo. So this is a good one to pick up. You can walk into any Walmart, Target, Best Buy, whatnot, and find a variation of this controller. Next is their direct competition, and that is PDP. Now with this one, this is one of the, I think you can see it right here, they call it the rematch. This is also the glow in the dark one. The only problem I have with these, the glow is not the most intense. Most people are gonna think it's gonna be boom. No, it wasn't. I did a video on that as well. But this reminds me quite a bit of the Power A, except the, the ergonomics are slightly different. Uh, it does have a larger spread for the buttons. The sticks have a different texture. But otherwise, the D-pad is pretty much the same. It's a little smaller. Uh, I do like the triggers. They are very nice. And again, these do have the programmable back paddles. Now, the one difference built in battery compared to the other one being replaceable with AA. So if these batteries do die, you can just plug it in, charge your controller, bam, you're good to go. And they sit around the same price as the Power A. So these are a nice option, plus you're gonna pay that little extra for the built-in battery and the branding, the imagery, the official Nintendo. Again, no NFC or Rumble as well, but you can walk into any Walmart, Target, Best Buy and get some kind of variation of this rematch controller. And if you've noticed, a lot of my controllers on this list are wireless. Why? Because the wireless ones are so inexpensive these days, for the most part, it's it's almost useless to get a wired one unless you want something a little more retro, which brings me to the next one, which is the GameCube style Switch controller. So this is going to be your GameCube version, variant. The only thing is you got the extra shoulder button, where the GameCube did not. Everything pretty much feels the same. You got a larger D-pad, but if you want to play Super Smash Brothers or a GameCube style game or Mario Sunshine or what have you on your Switch and you want to play with that GameCube controller and play like you did back in the day, this would be the perfect way to play. Or if you just like the ergonomics of the GameCube controller, this is a very good choice as well. These range anywhere from $15 to $25, depending on when you get it. I know that's a big difference, but there was a while where they were sitting at $15 everywhere and then jumped up to $20, jumped up to $25. So it depends on where you're buying them, online or in-store, pre-owned or new. These have been out for quite some time. I think these came out, I want to say 2018. I want to say it was 2018. So they've been out quite some time, but you can still get them. There is a wireless uh, version of this, but the problem is they're harder to find. You might be able to find them on Amazon. They're going to be a little more expensive, maybe eBay, something like that. But these, you can still walk into a Walmart. I saw them the other day, so I know you can still get them there. I think they were sitting around 20 or 25 at that Walmart. Don't quote me on that. But this is a solid wired choice. Now... I know I say in a lot of my videos that I prefer wired controllers, but again, with the price, this is the only wired one on my list. Next is a rather interesting one. It is one that I got on Amazon and I was, I was impressed. This was $16 on Amazon. Huh? It, I know it says SC there, but the box says CK. Don't know, but if you look this up, you can find this variation in a million different versions on Amazon for around the $15 mark. Now, it's really interesting that it has this glossy plastic up there, but this has every feature you can want minus NFC. So it's got the rumble, it's got the gyroscope, it has some lights and stuff to it. I, I, I think the battery's dead on here. Oh, nope, there we go. That's where you see the lights. It's interesting. But it lights up. It has your turbo function. It has your screenshot. Plus and minus. No flappy paddles. But you can get this one on Amazon. Like I said, I think I have the box sitting right here. That's what you're going to be looking at. 
uh, wireless pro game controller. See, there it says CK, there it says SK or SC. I'm not 100% sure on that. But if you look for this one specifically, this style, it is a rather good controller. I was shocked. You know, it looks kind of awky, kind of generic in some form or fashion. Some people might think it looks really cool. I, I like the design. I like the camo look and it's very comfortable. And like I said, this was a $15 wireless pro controller it is unbeatable in terms of just sheer value the only thing is i don't know how long these will last so that's my only issue there which brings me to the next ones yes ones because there's two variations of them i'm going to show you i did a video of them before and we've got the retro fighters the battler gc and the blade gc some people say, oh, they look like Nakis. They look like those weird bootleg ones. No, they're actually very ergonomic. They have this shape that just fits really nice into the hand. It has that GameCube look. If you like that GameCube, again, I think these are really nice. They do look weird. It looks like someone just kind of molded something with Play-Doh. But with that being said, they fit so well in the hand. The buttons are nice. I like them. I love the way the sticks feel. They have this smooth texture, but nice enough to where it's not bothering. Uh, uh, depending on the controller you have, you're going to get a weird texture that might just bother your thumb. That's what has me on that PDP ones. They have this weird texture I don't like, but this is nice and smooth, but your thumb's not going to slip off unless you're really sweaty. Same thing goes with this one. This one has the pro layout that's usually on most pro controllers or Xbox controllers. This one has the PlayStation layout with both sticks on the same plane. So depending on which one you like, Blade and Battler, and they come in the black, spice, orange, and the indigo, just like the GameCube stuff. So depending on which one suits your fancy, whether you like the offset or the same plane sticks, hey, the only thing is this one has a slight bit larger D-pad, and the D-pads are really nice. This one's going to be a bit smaller because of the location. So that is the reason I think this one is slightly bit better, but I do prefer the offset sticks. So one thing is you are going to need these USB uh, dongles to plug into your Switch in order to use them. So that's the only drawback, but otherwise they have rumble, they uh, have just everything that you could want in a Switch controller, and you can play your GameCube games with it and still kind of feel like you're playing the GameCube. So those are the two that I said are kind of the same but different. So let me put these to the side. And, which brings me to my favorite on this list. This is my absolute favorite. There are more expensive variations of this, but this is the 8-Bit Do Ultimate C controller. They have this in pink, uh, blue, and orange. I got the orange just because when I was able to get it, it was the only one that could ship to me in time. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to be waiting like a couple weeks for the blue one. So I got the orange, and I ended up liking it. This is a company that makes some of the best controllers on the market. Now, the Ultimate C is a standard pro controller. It doesn't have the flappy paddles on the back. Now, they do have a version of this one up that is called the Ultimate Controller. And the Ultimate has the controllable, um, programmable flappy paddles, also has built-in battery for docking, and it comes with a dock. This one does not. It does have a built-in battery. You have to charge it via Type-C on the top. Otherwise, it's just the perfect controller with that Super Nintendo style D-pad, but much softer. This is the one that I use for pretty much everything. Now, one thing that you're probably asking me, what makes this the best? Does it have Hall Effect sticks? No and yes. 8-Bit Do is releasing variations of all their controllers, whether it's the SM30 Pro, the Ultimate Bluetooth, what have you, with new Hall Effect stick updates. So when you go to buy them on their website or on Amazon, on Amazon, you're going to look for a little thing that just says Hall Effect and it'll say updated, but this is the previous one. Now, $29.99 and you can get this sometimes for as low as $19.99. So this is why I think this is the best option out right now. Keep an eye on it, put it on your wish list, take a look, 
to see if it's gone on sale. But the average price is $29.99. It has every feature that you could want in a Switch Pro controller, and it's top tier. It is peak. So this is my favorite. With that being said, I did, I did mention that I had two, two honorable mentions. I mentioned the head on. Okay. Now, this one, this next one, it's nice, but it gave me and gave a lot of people issues. And that is the PDP Afterglow Wave. Now, there's a version of this on the Xbox and a version of this on the Switch. You have two on the Switch, wired and wireless. This is the wireless. They come in different colors. I've seen them in gray, white, purple, so on. And then there's a, like I said, a wired version that comes in all the same colors. The Xbox version is wired only. So I bet you're asking, what's the drawback? I would say go watch the video for the whole explanation, but there's no instructions to this day. I've had this for months and months and months, and there is supposed to be a QR code that you scan on the box to take you to the website for instructions because they didn't put any they didn't put any in the box. So people have told me that as of now, I, I'm still getting comments on that video that this still does not have instructions. I was able to figure it out because I'm used to using these controllers. Also, I knew how to use it via the Xbox One. The Xbox One, you can use an app. This one has no app on the console, but it has some gorgeous colors. Uh, as you can see, lights up right there. So does have a charge to it. It is nice. You can have a, a RBG effect, no RGB eh, effect, and it can do all kinds of other stuff. Otherwise, it is a solid controller, and I think it is one of the best that uh, PDP has put out. But with so many issues about not being able to program it, not being able to get the lights to work, it's why it's an honorable mention. And the price at $50, a lot of people complain that a controller at this price should not have issues like that. Okay. Now my last one is a fun one. It's funny. And it's another one I did a video on that came from Amazon. And it's a my final honorable mention, and I'll leave it at that. And that is the Stoga. Baka, baka. Yes, Stoga is the brand. <laughs> Stoga Model 6711. And it's one of those from Amazon with programmable backbones. It's got every feature you could ask for, but it's shaped so weird. I don't think there's any. Oh yeah, there you go. It lights up. So you got light up rings, light up buttons. It's actually very comfortable. It has great features. There's no, I haven't had any drift or anything like that. And there's no input delay. I was expecting input delay or something like that, but I just thought it looked hilarious. It's like an M, bird M. It's, it was called the Eagle. And I just think it's hilarious. I really like the difference in the sticks. The sticks are really nice. It's it's a great controller. And I think this was around $20, $25. But you can turn off your lights here. There's a button in the back that you can turn on and off the lights. And you can turn on and off the rumble back here. Which I think is a cool feature. So you do have your trigger buttons are a little eh. I think that's my only problem. They just feel a little meh. I don't know how to explain that. And I never use programmable back paddles, but they sit just perfectly in the hand right back here. And I think this is a great controller and it has a headphone jack. So this is a fantastic controller. And at around, I think I've seen it 20 bucks. I'm not sure if I got it for 20, 22. It was pretty cheap. But I've seen it go up to 30 Don't pay for, uh, for it at that price. You really don't need to do that. But there you go. How about that? Have a couple of controllers here. We've got a number here and there. And I think these are just some awesome controllers if you're looking at buying something uh, for your Switch in 2024, some wireless or one wired option. Yeah, I have a number of wired controllers that I could recommend, but the prices sit around the same price 
as something like the 8-Bit Do or the Easy SMX. And these are some of the best controllers you can buy right now in terms of functionality and longevity. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions about any of these controllers that I featured in this video, ask me in the comments below uh, if I can link them. The thing is, a number of these I might have gotten from Walmart or Target. These I got at my local game store. You can buy them at their uh, website on Retro Fighters if they're still available. Some of them you can get them on Amazon or eBay. So it really depends on what your purchasing preference is. But with that being said, thank you guys so much. Again, if you have any questions, drop in the comments section below. I'll be glad to answer whatever I can. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video. Uh, make sure you turn that bell on for notifications so you know whenever we go live for Ready to Start Podcast every Thursday night, 9 p.m., as well as putting out new content every day. Thank you guys so much. Like we always say, be legendary. Thanks again.